very good evening and a warm welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. We're coming to you from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, the NTV Uganda Studios. Now tonight, about four years ago, Julius Sese was run over by a truck. He and a friend uh, were sharing a border border after a perf uh, performance rehearsal and they were heading to Muyenga to record a jingle. Loose electric wires fell on them at the Lugogo bypass. Julius was thrown in the middle of the road while his friend fell to the side to safety. An oncoming truck ran over Julius, tires sliding over his stomach and pelvic area. It is a miracle that he survived, but he did. He's joining us in the studio tonight for the show to speak about mental health in relation to what he survived, but also speaking about how to go about your mental health with the things that you love. And in his case, the arts, music. Julius, it's good to have you in the studio. Good to have you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> good to have you here. <laughs> it, it feels like you're praying. How are you doing? Four uh, years later, how are you? I, I'm in a much better place. Much better place mentally, physically. The fact that I'm able to do things I used to do. I, I, I think I, I, I should say I'm really, really, really happy. Yeah. When I was listening to you um, speak to me about your story, I don't see how you survived a truck. Yeah. You said how many tires? The, the <laughs> trucks with how many tires? Ten wheeler, actually. Okay. Yeah, so, I also don't know how that happened. I don't know the magic, but I, I am just grateful to God that, uh, that I'm, I'm here now. Do you remember um, the moment, that moment? Yeah. And are you able to describe it and also just maybe share with us? what you were thinking at that time, if you were thinking at all. Your friend was thrown on the other side of the road. You're thrown in the middle of the road. Yeah. And there's a truck. Did you even see the truck coming at you? I saw, but it, it, it all happens in a flash. So it takes like five, sec five ten seconds. And then, uh, so what w I looked at my friend. I was under a truck. She was lying on the side. We were looking at each other. And your life just flashes before your eyes and you're thinking, what have I done? Did I do this right? Did, did I <laughs> really do this wrong? Right? time to do that? Yes. I, so I hear because people speak about that out-of-body experience. And yes. So, 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 so it's, it's crazy because you're wondering, am I going to go to heaven? Have I done the right things in life? Yeah, so your life flashes right before your eyes and you just mm, think about what you've been doing and it's just... Yeah, so purpose, purpose is so important for me now uh, in this second life. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So you're lying mm. by the road, the truck's gone. There were yeah. no cars after the truck. I, th I think, thankfully, uh, it, Lugogo Bypass has, doesn't have very many cars. It's, cars are moving very, very fast, but uh, they, they are not that many. So after the truck passed, ran over me, uh, I think there's commotion, but the guys are here and they're shouting, he's dead, let's just get him off the road. So they made a mistake of lifting me by the hands and, and feet, yet the, uh, the, the part that was pivotal, uh, that's the stomach and the pelvic area, were not catered to. So that was the worst experience. It was so painful getting me off you the know, road. In my, in my head. <laughs> When I think about a truck <laughs> running over you, yeah, there shouldn't be anything here left, and yes. there shouldn't be anything. Yeah. Um, how is it that your body remained intact? I uh, that shouldn't really be a question for yeah. you, but that's what keeps coming to my mind about and how that happened. Same. The way you're asking the question is the way I'm also asking myself. I also, because in my head. I'd lost everything in my head. I was just, we were just giving it time because I, I had a friend there. She was, she, she couldn't think. So I was just giving it time. I was, I was praying if only we could get to hospital where there's a couple of people who can probably comfort and take care of, of, of them and stuff. So me in my head, I, we were just really buying time. It, it was done deal because I assumed so all the it. organs, all, all the organs were crushed. How so. did you get from the Goku Bypass to the hospital? Do you remember? Yeah, yes. I, we called on a friend of my, ours because we, we were in a rehearsal before. So we called on them and they came, but they, their car was really small. It was quite small. And uh, 
uh, uh, there, is a, there was a good Samaritan. I don't even know where he came from, a gentleman in his car, very white, Lexus, new. And I told guys, please don't put me in the gentleman's car. I was, <laughs> I told them, please do not put me in, in, in this guy's car. It's so clean. And look at, like, because I was bleeding all through. I was a mess totally. So, but he said, no, 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 just, just put him in the car. We are losing a life. And then I kept telling him, God bless you <laughs> in the car. <laughs> I kept telling him, God bless you, God bless you, thank you very much, what? So he, he dropped me off at, at the hospital. How were you able to talk? And you, listen, I'm going to keep asking <laughs> how you were able to talk after a truck ran over you. So you yes. get to the hospital. Yeah. I, I know you went to a couple of hospitals. I don't want us to yeah. mention them. Yeah. But the first hospital, yeah. um, there are no supplies. No supplies. That's Because that, the accident was at 2 p.m. PM. Yes. No supplies whatsoever. The medical reports are uncertain. It was a bad, terrible experience, and I also got the services I got because we knew someone. My my sister knew someone there who who had to claim that they were your relative. They were my relative. That's how I got the medical care, and then getting an ambulance to hospital number two was also tug of war. Now from two, we get an ambulance at around eight p.m. Eight p.m. So eight p.m. we get to this other hospital. The other hospital also doesn't have machines. So I was in very fragile state. So the ambulance ideally is supposed to be fast, but this one ideally had to be slow. It had to be slow. So at the last hospital is where I got medical aid, and that was like at around the same time I got the accident. So I was in transit. In yes, <laughs> I was in transit wow. for 12 hours. Wow. Yeah. Okay, um, so what was your recovery like? How long were you in the hospital? Um, um, and what, was, what did they realize was the extent of the damage to your body? Uh, thankfully, because mentally I was prepared for the worst, but uh, the good news kept coming. For me, I was relieved at, at 2, 2 a.m. when they started diagnosing and the kid, there was no kidney failure, the bladder was okay, the backbone was okay. I was like, wow, like, like this is it. I, I felt like everything, everything was, 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 was a miracle. So recovery, they, they, they told me uh, was supposed to take over six to nine months, but they didn't tell me that because I think my friends and family know if you tell me something, my mind is affected. If you tell me I have a headache, I'll get the headache instantly. So they kept that from me. And uh, by six weeks, really, six weeks, I, I pushed myself. I would try to do stuff. By six weeks, I was able to sit because I, I couldn't turn or sit. Or So by six weeks, I was able to sit and turn. And when I went back to hospital, I was given crutches. That's when and then I started physiotherapy. So you couldn't walk yeah. after that? No. You had to learn to walk I again? Had, yes, you had. From turning, you see how comfortab comfortably we turn in the bed? It, it was really hard for me. I had to just learn the whole experience. Like, it was so hard, man. Life, <laughs> life was, was really, really hard. But I, I got a hang of things eventually. I'm yeah. glad you can speak about it now, yeah, yeah. smiling. But you're always smiling, I think. Uh, that is it, yeah. man. I <laughs> <laughs> um, you left the hospital yeah. and you were still in school. Yes, I was still in school. So the, the funny story I'll tell you about school and my accident is uh, after I recovered, I, I got a... Uh, I had a complication, now this is after physiotherapy, I'm using crutches. I got a complication with one of my thighs and I had to get an operation. And I did a paper after that operation. It was in the morning, I went, did my paper. And in the in afternoon, no, 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 I was using crutches now. So I went, did the paper. And then after I went, for a gig, we have what we call gigs, performances for a wedding. So I put it all together and went and performed. But it was the night was the worst night of my life. So yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how did it? 
affect you? Can you think back to how, well, first of all, your family, yes. um, what were they going through at this time? What were they thinking? What, did you have a support system when you weren't able to walk or do anything on your own? Yes, I, I had a very, I should say, very good support system because once things like that happen and I don't. I, I should say we. I didn't. I don't. I didn't come from a world probably a very wealthy and family and stuff. But uh, I had a very very good su support system with with friends, uh, people from 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 church. There's there's very many people who stood by me. I had to be relocated, uh, and you know there's very many things that change about you. You become very very toxic, and that's I think the reason I wanted. To to speak about mental health is we do not realize how we are affected. We only focus about uh, on the physical. Uh, what you look like. Yes, and I'm you're... getting better. Yeah. But I was, I think I, I was dying on the inside and I, it was affecting people. Take for instance, just being, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get to, to your mental health, but I yeah. wanted to know um, the kind of support system you had and, yeah. and how present the were there for you like yes. even you know just taking you around to wherever you needed to go if at all yeah. how were you with you you you're basically surviving on, on a lot of gigs yes so <laughs> now you are not able to do your gigs yes I, from and for me it was just really really humbling and the people and i'm really really grateful to everyone who who availed because i got to realize how awesome the people who are around me are because they were present I, I didn't have insurance and the bills were as exorbitant as one gig, one one day in hospital would cost like 800k 900k crazy you were there for six weeks and I was there for all that time and even after those six weeks I have to, you I had to go back to hospital three days a week so my friends had to provide facilitation like that's transportation we had to I had to be relocated because the state I was in and like the pictures were not good for that for for the eyes and people would feel a lot of remorse probably so I had to be secluded so and they paid for everything i i i'm grateful and i i was really that that's the reason <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's if, if there's anything i'm just so grateful for for the people who are always around us and are willing to help and i realize sometimes we don't have to shun them or reject help because i was a pro in in that field but my guts were Let's take a short break, Julius, <laughs> and when we we'll return, you're, you're going to speak to us about mental health. I, I know that's yes. really the, the, yeah. the big deal for you in all of this now. Yes. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. In the studio this evening uh, is Julius Sese, who is sharing his life experience after the accident, but also how that affected his mental health. Yeah. But before we get to that, you, you were starting to speak about um, your state when your friends had to move you, yeah. to relocate you from yeah. where you were staying to yeah. another place. Can you describe what you looked like? Because we Ooh. can't see now, looking at you now, why you, you know... What was it like at that point? I also refused pictures, by the way. Like, okay, there's a few pictures <laughs> that, like, probably. But uh, it was so bad. It was really, really bad. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine myself. Uh, and reality dawns on you. Like, you get to realize that this is how I'm going to be. Because for me, I had to get to a point of acceptance of this is my situation now and f by the time imagine you've been very very mobile and then all of a sudden i used to admire people who you who would how bad was it i used to admire people who would be able to use wheelchairs because i was 
I was stuck on my bed, man. Like I was stuck on my you bed. You couldn't move. What, yes. what were your physical wounds like? So I had, I had a, a wound on the back because I, the skin was peeled off on the back, and then the pelvic bones had uh, the hip bone had dislocated, so it was out, and the pelvic bones had fractured. It was really bad, and then. Uh, I was get I was I'm tiny already now I'm 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 a bit of of size but I was really really tiny but I had lost the little weight that I had on me yeah and then skin was also and off. then skin was also off and then my stomach was swollen because it was it was not a good sight to to watch yeah okay yeah. when when did you and the people around you begin to notice that um, this wasn't, s yes, there were physical changes to you, but then yeah. there were also mental, yes. uh, psychological changes that needed to be dealt with. Uh, I think they got to realize when I, I decided to go back to, to the gigs, performances, because uh, after seclusion I had to be, I, I stayed with my, the, my friend because I don't think she was for her, she was fine mentally, but whenever she would notice my progress, I think it was good for her. And that I think that is how for her she, she dealt with it and, and grew and outgrew. But uh, I started realizing it and I think the people I stayed, uh, the people I worked with realized I was toxic. When uh, I reached and we would go for a rehearsal maybe, I used to sing so well before, but then I started get developing all these insecurities. I couldn't pro uh, produce as much as I would before, and the result of uh, insecurities leads to low self-esteem. My esteem now was lost, and because I have a problem, I become toxic. I project it on other people. So w one of the things with your self-esteem yes. was also the way you were looking now? Yes. Yes. A lot of it was the way I was looking because before, you know how I developed now all these scars. I have scars all over my body. I, I can't move as much as I used to. So very, very many things. You feel like you're at the mercy of, of people. Like so. every time people look at you, they're thinking... Something. Yes, something. Now, take for instance, uh, you're in, in, in music and in your head you're thinking, now guys are talking about me, they think I can't do this, I can't do this. Sometimes in actual sense you can't for, for the moment, but you are judging and you're putting it upon yourself, you feel you could do better. And then also, I would want to go maybe to, to the supermarket, but then you need to beg. I need a car. Da, 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 da. Can I get this? Can I get this? It's it, it's 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 really hard. You so. feel like you are burdened to the people around yes, you. Yes, yes, exactly. I felt like I was going to be a burden from the moment I was on the road to till I would I I, I got I, I I got my limbs back. I don't <laughs> <laughs> your limbs never <laughs> went away. You're 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 on your feet now, and you yes. do a lot of gigs. We're doing gigs even yes. before. Um, yes. I know a lot of people are in the gig economy. Yeah. Maybe just to help us understand how mm. how you survive that in in that economy. For a lot of people, it doesn't look very stable, but you know. Mm. Interesting. The gig economy actually pays off. It pays off because I mean, I used it, I used it to pay my my tuition in school. So you just need to be smart, but it's quick money. So. It's easy to think that you're going to be making that money all through. So it's, it's like a mousetrap. Unless you know the goal and as to why you're in there. Because uh, the money is not taxed. <laughs> the money is not taxed. But maybe. but So imagine if you have three gigs. Let's, let's say the least someone gets is like 50K. Uh, which is a lot of money for for very many for very many people because the rate of unemployment in this economy 
is so high. But there's just a lot of money you can save off of it. So uh, three gigs in one day, that would be about 150,000? 150,000. A day. A day. And then there's the weekend. So weddings, weddings bring in a lot more. That would be like 150, 200. Depending on the band that you're performing for, it could even go as high as 300 to 500K. Yeah, so there's, there's money there. You only have to know why you're there. And how to handle the money. And how to handle the money. But there is, uh, there is money. There is money. But the thing is, money management is... is yeah, the is, financial is, discipline yes, of yeah. all of it. Yeah. Um, so when did you get from the place of all of the insecurities that you had yeah. and also from the place of I'm a man, I don't <laughs> seek counseling, I'm, African, I'm an African, African man. <laughs> when did you get from that place to I need help and I, I'm, I'm going to look for help in whichever form I can get it? Yeah, uh, three things. I realized, I just dis realized my output was being affected greatly and I was blaming a lot of peop people for a lot of things. And I, rea I just became toxic. And I felt so bad because I'm a nat naturally, I'm bubbly, like I'm, like I'm the life of the party. You, you've clearly come <coughs> back to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I am the life of the party. And I didn't know what, I was, hap what was happening. I, I felt like it was so dark. It was it was not a good place to be in. And then I decided, uh, 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 the manager of the band I was leading then asked in a rehearsal sometimes, we finished the rehearsal and he was like, Julius, do you want to go away on holiday? We can pay for it. Do you want to see a counselor? And then I, in my head I was thinking, who do these things people see? It, I felt like that was, a sign of weakness because I wanted to show guys that I got this, I can make it, we are Africans, we can handle all this stuff. But it it was a lonely place. It was a lonely place. I'm the one who usually gave life and here I was giving people hard time. So that is when I decided to to get my comfortable space and I started writing. So I, start, I, I started writing whatever I felt I would be pissed by people and situations, think about stuff, and I, and I would just literally write, write about it. So you write and then you turn your writing into music, uh, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I, I, there's a song that of yours. What is it called? Ah, Perfect Imperfections. Perfect Imperfections. <laughs> and <Yes>. so <laughs> let's play Perfect Imperfections, a bit of it, so yes. that we get a sense of... Yes of what you were telling us in, in this song and I, yes. was it speaking to your situation yes. at that time yes. and acceptance? Mm. Uh, Perfect Imperfections was, I'd, I'd gotten very many, I was, I had scars on my body. I had, I was not looking as good I, as I used to and I was the one trying to encourage myself. This is how I am. This is what I look like and every other person should embrace because you know how people body shame, people body shame others and I just want to wanted to speak about it because people are going through a lot and body shaming shouldn't be one of those things. All right, perfect yeah. imperfections. Let's, let's just get a quick excerpt yeah. from yeah. that song and just mm. see if you still have your voice. <laughs> 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 and then we'll take a break and be right back. Flows on my body 
Make me me and I'm perfect I know I'm tired of trying To be honest and perfect I me all the scars on my body Make me me and I'm perfect I know When I turn the wire, I will not change nothing about me. Better worry, better Wendy. Love you, let me love me the way I am. If you're white and I am black, if you're big and small, small voice, big voice, all that don't matter. Let's live life in full color, yeah. And I'm tired of trying to be honest and perfect. On my body, make me me, and I'm perfect. I know I'm tired of trying to be honest and perfect. I'm me, all the scars on my body. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. We are coming to you from the Kampala Serena Conference Center. And we are having a conversation with Julius. You, yeah. you know, every time I look at you, it's very hard to think that you had that accident. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad you, you survived it. Mm -hmm. So we're listening to your song, Perfect Imperfections. Mm -hmm. And you have this huge scar in yeah. the song. Is that? S yeah, the scar, it. That was makeup. Makeup. <laughs> makeup really. But it's speaking to the rest yes. of the scars that we we can't see. Yes, it's speaking for the rest of the scars and also like I because I'm working on the album I think which will be ready April, March. Uh, it's called Scars. And okay. like it's just literally I just want to to be like a voice because these issues are not really, really addressed. And if they're addressing them it's probably the serious uh, it's on a very serious note, but I, I am addressing them on a lighter note through music. It's enjoyable, but it's a message. Do not, let's, there's a line that in the song that says, let's live life in full color. Like there's small people, there's tall people, there's short people. There are a lot of colors. Let's just, yes, let's, let's just live life in full color. Yeah. Um, why is a conversation on mental health important to you? I've been having conversations on the show on mental mm. health mm. for um, really mostly a lot of them have yeah. been in January yes. and the beginning of February mm. and even you know the previous years I think it's an important conversation but yes. why is it important to you? It is important to me because I've seen the way it affected me. The way it affected me I wouldn't wish that on anybody. It's a prison. Mental health you're like a prisoner in your own body and you are limited to very many things the world has very many opportunities to offer and we are born we are pr in prisoners in in our own bodies S people are all willing to help us but because you're you mentally trapped it. you can't see it you can't see it so for me just 
because for me my escape was if I didn't write about it and I sang ab about it, uh, I'll just take for instance uh, the first time I got back on stage performing as a solo artist. Uh, it took me one month to convince to perform because I was in bondage. I felt like I cannot, the, the cannots were very, very many. I can't do this, I can't do this. I was like, I can't perform, guys. But then I realized the freedom, the freedom when you, when you mentally liberate yourself, it, it is pure bliss and the joy you give to others, not bragging, but I'm, I'm life itself, but so. <laughs> the joy you bring to other people, the freedom therein, so acceptance and then working on, on it, for me, I've seen that before and after, and it, it's beautiful. And I, I would wish for everyone to, to just go ahead, analyze what you're going through, handle it, just face it. Do not cover it up. Open it up. Get help. Face it, yes. You, have, have you, have you, <laughs> have you sought this help? Bad. Uh, have you gone to a counselor. I'm on a journey. Are you speaking to anybody about what you've been dealing with, what you might still be dealing with? I am on a journey. It's, it's a journey. So because there's also is issues of trust. Uh, so I wrote about it and, and also the person who has been helping me record the music would, would I think would be having probably sessions. It would be sessions. These days would go and never never record anything. You're just but talking through. Just talk about this issue. How how are we going to how are we going to handle it? How are we going to work about it, work our way around it. And also it just opened my eyes to the fact that you're not alone. Like you're not the first person to go through this. Uh, find people who have a relatable story and they always have they always have answers to certain questions so instead of keeping to yourself you I know it's hard being for some people it's hard being open but vulnerable yes and vulnerable yes that's the word so just just find your comfortable space or a person you can easily talk to so I found a lot of those people it was not easy but I f I <coughs> finally opened up I'm also considering the counselor beat, yes. But you, you've come I a long way, journey. I think, yes. um, from what you, you say. Yes. Every time I have a man speaking about mental health, it's a yeah. very different picture from, yeah. you know, um, I am comfortable speaking to somebody. I would go yeah. and find someone and speak to them. But I guess it's, it's different for you guys. You sort of feel like <sighs> that's taking something from you. Yes, exactly. I, it's, I feel like it's like... You, I'm you're taking the man taking out of me. Yes, you're literally you're taking <laughs> something <laughs> out of me. Like I'm being, it's, it's, it's just so hard. Like, okay, I feel like there's always, I, the natural, naturally you feel like you can handle it. There is, there's always a way around it. And like, if, I, I, I felt like I didn't even have, I didn't have, it was not up to me to face certain issues like I felt like you can't talk to someone about that you can't tell someone that I am depressed you you need to be a then man say you're weak yes I can't I can't <laughs> say I'm weak I need to go make that money I'm yes you're lame but you need you need to work you see what I'm saying yeah, show up and do the show work. up do the work and I was proving it was just proof 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 but it, the end result is, is terrible. The so you're result. doing all these things and you're dying. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, what does your music career mm. look like right now for uh, you? And what, what's your long-term plan in music? Long-term plan, uh, this after, after doing uh, a project, I wrote, I wrote this, something I wrote about child and maternal health. And I got the opportunity to go to, to, to Delhi courtesy of World Health Organization, I won a global songwriting competition, so, uh, and it just gave me, <laughs> it gave me bigger perspective 
with Josephine Karunji. <laughs> <laughs> it gave me bigger perspective on just singing. Singing is it's good. It's good to sing and entertain people, but singing for a cause is very, very important. And also, I'm writing a, an album currently. I, it's done. We are just working on the release strategy. It's called Scars. Okay. Uh, it's a 10 track album, but I just said I'm just going to be writing. Yes, I love entertaining and stuff, but if there is no message or purpose attached to what I'm singing for, then it just makes no sense. So I, I just want to speak about issues that affect the environment and our society as a whole. I would be glad to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I like the way you did one of... I think you did the same song. It yes. was the same song, yes. and you you used animation yes, really yes. for it. Yes. So we're going to have excerpts of that playing as well. But before we we go, um, we have the audiences that we have at this time of, yes. of the evening are mm -hmm. diverse. So you have yes. parents, then you have younger people. Yes. And because it's also a family show, sometimes you have yeah. children, children watching. Yes. Um, so I, from your experience yes. with the accident, your yes. experience coming to terms with, I need help yes. to just get back in the right state of mind. Yes. Um, and everything you've gone through up to, I don't know how old you are, but up mm. to where you are, yes. what would you like to be the message that you put out? Uh, the message I would want to say, to put out is, first of all, whatever issue you go through, it doesn't matter how strong you are, we are all vul vulnerable at some point. And you might not be able to talk to someone, but always find your safe space. Your safe space can be through writing. Your safe space can be through seeking counsel. Your safe space might be finding solitude. But whatever it is, do not die with issues inside. Mental health is real. You can, you'll end up exploding at one point, and you do not want that. So if you're a kid and or if you're a grown-up person, like always find someone to talk to and I'm sure there's always someone able to listen. My name is Sese, it doesn't mean I'm an island, so no man is an island. <laughs> 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 yes, so just because I'm Sese doesn't mean I'm an island, so no man is an island. Seek health and seek help and yes, you'll be surprised by what you have in the inside of you that's being limited by what's in your mind. Great. Yes. Thank you very much, Julius. Uh, and you really have a great voice. I've, I've, listened, <laughs> I've listened to it in church and I've listened to your, your, your music as well. And yes. I must say that. So we're going to leave you. Um, you with an excerpt from, yes. again, uh, Perfect Imperfections, but yes. from the animated version. Yes. And well, that brings us to the end of our show for tonight. Thank you so much, uh, Julius, for taking the time to speak with us. Yes, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yes. Coming up is MTV Weekend Edition. Wide awake and I'm hurting Is in my face on my body mm. Blurry image never clearer It seems like I'm getting older And I'm tired of trying to be honest and perfect I me All the flows on my body Make me me and I'm perfect I know I'm tired of trying To be honest and perfect I know all the scars on my body Make me me and I'm perfect I know Oh, no.
Tu en la tuenda 